Welcome back everyone for the next part of Limbus Company. So in the last part we had a little flashback about Rodian's past. The, the Sonya guy was trying to recruit her back into his side or rather into his team but our girl refused straight out. She wants to enjoy the cold a bit longer before she finally warms herself up to forgiveness. Right after that, we tried to get after where they go after the Golden Barrow, but suddenly the castle kind of started to rumble and now it's gone and I guess there's some kind of mammoth following us or something? I'm not entirely sure, we're about to run away. Dante, our job here is done, right? So yeah, we should book it, right? Ah, give me a second, I never considered what to do after getting down here. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> oh, really? Wow, does this look like we have the time to do me plans now? No. The bus! Where's the bus? We left it on the other side of the city! We walked to the casino! We can't go to the bus! Stop yapping! Useless rubbish! We're running the hell away, okay? Ah, this might be the first logical statement I've heard. Leave your mouth, Heathcliff. Wow, I'm smashing your skull in pieces later. Uh-huh! What? What was that? Okay. Uh, we have more of those neighbors. Great. And then we have, what's that? Baba Yaga's coming. Baba Yaga's is closing in. Clear the way or face certain. Ah! Certain dead! Sure! Sure! Why not? <laughs> Ego! Ego! We all love Egos! I would prefer if you hit multiple targets. Maybe I could change that? Probably can't. Okay. Uh, at the very least, they aren't really that strong on their own, right? At least we have that. Be a hit. Both of them are going to get hit. I'm going to attack that guy in the back. And probably him as well. But then again, no, go for the guy in the back. Go for the guy in the back. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I can't really redirect all of them either way. All of them have two dices. I only have one. Okay, that one is down. Not that lucky, but that's fine. You're saying us it. Not able to recover from it. Don't really have that much sanity. It's very unfortunate. But hey, you have the power of water in the scarf. Beautiful, beautiful scarf. 50 damage each. Enough to kill all of them. Gave me fragile? Since when do you have fragile? Or is it a new thing? Frost Stomp, that's a new thing. Gain one protection for every ally that dies this wave. Uh, so I should make sure to kill them all in one go. Well, that doesn't really matter at this point. He is certainly going to die now. I mean, everyone is free to hit him with everything that they have. As you can see. Perfect. Now we have more of them! Need more light blue stuff, that's for sure. Do I need other eagles? Probably not. We have sanity now. We have a lot of sanity. That guy. And he's probably going to survive, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, you sang! Finish him off! That's not enough to finish him off, never mind. I was about to say, that should have technically be enough, but no. They only have like 40 HP, but still, still, I guess they are kind of tanky. To some degree, at least. At the very least, our ponytail was able to finish him off. Aww, seriously? Why didn't you hit that? 
Well, then again, you only have like 12 sanity. Makes sense. It does make sense. Ah, that's a push. Actually, just finish him off. She's gonna take care of it. You can get some points. Uh, extra hits, I would say. And more extra hits. Actually speaking, you can focus on your defenses. I guess we're going to carry over the, the passive that we have. Not entirely sure how many rounds are going to follow. Should I probably check the top left corner for this? Four waves, right? Yeah, this is the last wave that I have to handle. And it's just five guys. That isn't so bad. But I did lose my, my passive, so that's unfortunate. I'm not entirely sure he even had the chance to use in the first place. That one. That one. This one. We can certainly do that one. Let's go for more defenses on the last guy. And then we just have to take a couple more extra hits. Yeah. It's very unfortunate how they all come with double dice. I wonder how long, how many rounds we have to fight before we get the, the next one, uh, the next checks. Oh well, at the very least it seems like they have no issues whatsoever to win their clashes, so that's good. Even though our Mercer, thanks to his slow speed, is having a difficulty, <coughs> a difficult time over here, but it's still fine. It's still fine. Okay, you clash against that one, that's a freebie. Yep, you can't win against either of them, so that's fine. It's gonna be fine as long as I redirect it with somebody else. This one probably. Yep, I'm gonna redirect it. And you're gonna help this guy out. And then both of them should die within one turn. Perfect, another one is down. They do have two protection though, so it is. It isn't going to be that easy for them, but at the same time, they're so powerful. Yeah, we don't really have to worry about them. Are we out? Thank you. Didn't solve the issue with the golden barrow, though. Wasn't the golden stuff in the castle? Isn't the castle right behind us, chasing us down? <laughs> I see the exit over there. And there's a golden light. Gah. Persistent rooters. Our rooters? We'll have to distract them somehow before we can get away. Why don't you just throw one of us dead them? You can bring them back later anyways, right? I mean, we could, but wouldn't that be a bit cruel? And why are you looking at me while you say that? Hold on. Look there. Leave this to me. Sonya? What are you playing at? Hey, I can't bring you back if something goes wrong, though. Rodia, what's with your attitude? We have to take all the help that we can get, right? Yes, but at the same time... <laughs> I've seen people who would offer to help without asking for anything. And they usually have some ulterior motive as well. True. It's just like how you simply couldn't hold yourself back from using your axe that day. I'm discovering that I might have a similarity. Inexplicable drive pushing me. Dante, I take it that your organization is working to make a better world on its own, right? Yes? Ah, uh, I know. <laughs> what does a better world entail, actually? For the first time, I was reminded that I had never questioned the motivation of Limbo's company. Actually speaking, we have never bothered asking about that at all. We just joined them and uh, I guess we kind of met the other branches of Limbo's company duo that tried to help us, but that kind of failed. I have no idea how big this thing even is. <laughs> Thankfully, none of my contemplation footching reaches uh, Sonya, and he took my lack of response as a sign of agreement, but then again, he wouldn't be able to tell. Silence sometimes speaks volume. I'll take that as a positive. And one more thing. The child will soon visit you too. A child? Huh? 
Uh, sorry, my eyes have fooled me. I thought I saw something on his forehead from, for a second. On his forehead? Indeed, I mean the boy will left quite impression on you. It'll be a touching reunion, I imagine. What boy? Sonia nudged his chin at something behind her. It is literally just standing there? Not inside of any type of abnormality or anything? Okay. A faint light was shining beneath the fallen brooks of ice, giving a distinctive glow. The Golden Barrow? Are we finally able to get it? Really? <laughs> Don't expect me to act on the same impulse of kindness next time that we meet, though. If a clear path towards our prosperity of many shows itself before my eyes, I will take it without hesitation. After Sonia left us with a mysterious message, the Euro DVA began to show up one after the other. Well, this may have been as good as a time as any for a touching farewell like I won't forget you. Then I saw that Rodia was the first to sprint for the exit. Rodion? Are you not concerned about them? <laughs> What's up? Irrespective of consequential difference, he was nevertheless a friend of yours, right? Ah, Dad, uh, he's the clever sort. I'm sure he'll figure out a way to live in all that jazz. True. An ideal form of friendship, huh? <laughs> Are we really just leaving them behind? That is a gigantic monster, though. I mean, sure, it's probably unable to leave this facility and all. So as long as you're very careful and enter all kinds of cables, we might be fine, but still, it is a gigantic abnormality. We only saw the feats, right? We only saw the feats. Ha! <sighs> Sometimes later. We actually brought it back home. Virtulous, are you proud of us now? We cleared a mission. Would you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> Though I was dead tired, Virgilus wouldn't spare me from his fierce gaze until I gave him a brief verbal report of what we went through today. I see, so that is your story. There's just one thing that bothers me though. This man, Sonia was it? His action during those final moments don't quite seem to match the beliefs he told us, or well, rather you. Which is why we should scrutinate his true intention. Hey, time out. Time out! Hmm? First you're saying, and now you too? Why does everyone care more about Sonya than me? The bottom line is, uh, line is that we got the Golden Barrow, right? And as a plus, check this out, everyone! What? From her pockets, Rodia pulls out a colorful bunch of gaming ships in her hand. We can exchange these cuties for cash at the casino, so we should drop by one. I nab them while your, our manager dazzles the floor with the jackpot. Wait, what? I'm impressed that you fought to snatch that stuff amidst all of that chaos. Well, Verge, what do you say to a juicy serving of Prime? Saloin steak to celebrate our abounding success today. What do you think, Cheryl? Hmm? Seems Matty wants it too. Fresh, succulent, juicy meat. Oh, of all the things you could mention. Alright then, I leave Rodion to pick a restaurant in District 10 for us. Isn't District Friend the cannibals? I I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Vroom, vroom. Now we're talking, Virgie. All right, all said and done. Beneath her grin, Rodia's eyes were shaking with distress, but she soon covered it up with a guise of duality, as if nothing ever happened, so she's still kind of bothered by the whole thing that we saw. Well, to be fair, she didn't really have that much time to get over all of the stuff that, uh, that happened in the past. Thanks to Sonia, we kind of got a fast-forward version of all the stuff that happened back then. And he did kind of try to manipulate her into joining his crew again. So it didn't really solve it, but hey, at the very least we all made us safely out of that place, right? We still have time to deal with her issues later. 
And, and I'm pretty sure Grigor isn't quite done with his stuff either. So yeah. I'm pretty rad, and I. True. You really are. <laughs> Wait, are we going to have more credits now? Oh my god. And she's gonna sing again. What? Are you gonna sing like Gregor? Impressive, Yuri Devier. Not only did you manage to clear out a legion of foes, you also burned all that cash. You should know, Herman, that I've never been friends with money. I will admit you're not like most idealists who are all theory and no actions. You would have earned my praise had you secured the Golden Barrow on top of everything. I shot Rodia that world. The dear reality that fascinated me. Alas. I suppose it didn't win her over. It seems the method you suggested was wrong after all, Herman. She wasn't the kind of person to let a few words change her mind. So, do you find this regrettable? Well. Part of me might have wished that she had followed me like in the past, but no, I think I'm actually relieved to find that she's the same as before. Rodia wasn't wishing for a perfect world with no flaws whatsoever. Rather, she might have felt that it would be boring to live in such a world, so there'd be no way to affirm that she is special. That is the impression that I've got. I thought of her to be a woman of virtue, principle, unshakable. But hearing this, she was a dreamer just like you, wasn't she? She still has a long way to go, I'm sure. She won't want to admit it, though. Of course not, I mean, you did see what she said when she was uh, talking about her luck. You have to believe you're the best person around. 
I got your point. I will keep it in mind for future consideration on our course of actions. You won't scold me for this, right? I was unable to complete the job that you gave me. Reparations won't make the parole appear at our feet, now will it? It's fine, wherever the golden parole might be right now. What matters most is who claims the bundle at the end. The bundle at the end? The bundle? Are, are they trying to steal our stuff near the end? Once they need all of it? And it seems like they were really trying to get her. Maybe they actually need our guys in order to make use of that Golden Burrow stuff. I mean, they are special. They can be revived. They are connected to the Golden Burrow. The Golden Burrow is resonating with them and they can... They have access to all types of uh, egos and other identities from other worlds. They are special. That isn't something anybody can do, just like that. And basic ideas have been uptied to level 3. Thank you. Really like that. The egos as well. So everyone got a bit stronger. Great. I should probably consider doing that for my uh, other egos as well, right? In order to, keep, to make sure that they are able to keep up with the others. Even though I have to say... I have to say, they are kind of strong, I give them that. I mean, it is three stars and two stars, they are really strong. They might not even need that up tier, but I'm still going to give that to them. Even though it is kind of costly, it actually costs 80 of those light bulbs. But hey, it increases the speed to 37. And unlocks Daring Decision, our favorite skill of all times, it does a lot of tremor. Wait up gets stronger. Slice gets stronger. And I think that's it, right? But did something change? I'm not entirely sure about the passives at all. That is actually support. Right, we get the, pass uh, the support passives now. Ah, that's gonna be interesting. Nevertheless, let's up time. Okay. That has changed the picture. Mm -hmm. Carrot and stick. Support passive. Wait up, slice. What's that? There's a cutscene to this. Okay, I will rip you in pieces. The thing emanating a series of sound one wouldn't expect to hear from the machine. Soon sparks flew, and something ripped apart from it with a loud, tearing noise. So this was the last one, huh? The child tossed the now defunction uh, prosthetic to the side of the alleyway and collapsed on wherever she could find a seat. Phew! I'm tired! I probably should have not tried to complete all of these contracts at once. Yeah, you should have taken your time. Though, if I'm going to take care of the shop she gave me, I suppose it would be best that I don't leave any unfinished contracts behind. Okay. The child sighed and scribbled something on a small notebook. And made her way back to the office. Ah, <sighs> The note said, open contract 4 to 4. And above it were several other entries labeled private contracts. The child's relatively small fixer office was flooded with decent amount of daily contracts, to the point where it rivals the workload of some association of lower-ranked sections. <sighs> what am I even doing? This business isn't all what I wanted when I started my own fixer office. It is Olga's fixer office? Well, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I kind of assumed that she was a big shot of the, the whole thing, but... It is called Mola Office. Most of them are related to at least their own stuff, right? But it's fine. Well, offices and associations are both fixed organization. The miniature of their works were somewhat different. It's not entirely correct to say that associations are naturally superior to offices, though they employ many more fixers in operating on larger scales. This is why many officers maintain an association relationship with them another association. 
Many assume that an author's primal source of income is from private contracts, but even that isn't easy to snake when the office hasn't made a name for itself yet. So fledgling officers often take what are known as open contracts. Associations often take and post open contracts so that other fixer officers can pick them up. But since they also take on the first comes first service basis, many officers often go daily without grabbing a single one of them. Association officers or officers with an associated insider may be subcontracted by them, but neither has been true for this child. When the child opened her own office, she dreamed of a slow and easy day of low effort contracts, a night full of delicious liquor. Did she manage to pick up an open contract? Time to get to work, did she not? Time to get plastic. That was the plan, anyways. After a while doing exactly that, her author's reputation inadvertently grew and private contracts enough to form an aquarium began dizzling in. It had grown to be a rather reputational author, so of course, many more people are sending their requests. But this contract was... something on a completely different level of significance. <laughs> I don't know if I should thank my friend for this fortune, or blame her for getting me into this mess. A contract from a wing. Even I can't help but feel a bit anxious about this. Contract about a wing? This contract had somehow found its way into her office. All the way from Air Corp! One of the city swing! Is it the warp train thing? Of course, it was only sheer luck that the child's friend was the first to bring up this contract, to which the child eagerly and immediately jumped at. But luck favors those who are prepared to seize it, after all. It may simply be a testament to how much her office had grown. <laughs> to worry before I even met the challenge. This isn't like me at all. In fact, I should get myself a drink before the train rides. Just one shot as a pick me up. Hey, you saying? I'm heading out. With that, she jumped to her feet. She was going to get herself some good vibe tipsiness, perhaps, before embarking on such an important contract. If only she knew that this was all a plan for Miho to test out the vault of the library, right? Oh yeah, and that actually gives us lunacy reward as well. Interesting, so it's actually worth it to uptie all of them? Kind of, I guess. Interesting, interesting. Do we have a another story on the Sengs part as well, once we uptie him to level 3? Which is a bit cheaper with only 40 of those uh, light bulbs. Seems like, yes, yes, it does. It actually does. Quite a responsibility, huh? Truly is. And with that, he also gets the gamble enchantment cleaning up the mess. Okay. Oh, that picture again. I kinda like it. I really do. <laughs> you intend to leave the office again? Wait, again? I don't appreciate your tone. This business outing is strictly for professional purpose only. Do you understand? How could I, pray tell, were this in any other way when every instance of your business outing has led to copious insorbitry or something like that? That is but the nature of this business. A generous amount of alcohol has always resulted in smoother negotiation with our contractors, right? I see. Try not to slumber over long this time, then. S you do not know the amount of work I put into this office, right? I mean, she did She did just do four missions at once today. She has a lot on her way, and she has a lot of her shoulders, no? You should consider her opinion at all times, you saying She is the boss, after all. <laughs> Though the child clearly heard her grumble, he elected to ignore it. Arguing with her would only lead to pointless squabble that always ended up as a waste of time. Besides, what point could there be in arguing with your boss? And just be aware that I'll be heading out for a bit today. You saying the contracts I snagged yesterday is coming up soon. 
Make sure that we don't leave any work behind before leaving the office for that job. After all, that might be a long one. Most certainly. Touch. Close the door. She's out. As soon as his boss left the office, the child immediately returned to his seat and began organizing the documents. Unlike his boss, whose every sentence exudes like a, like a, oh god, like a coldness, I guess she just doesn't want to work, this child was well known in the industry for this com his complete and utter focus on the work at hand. Everyone knew that the child was diligent and dedicated to the work given to him. But... I guess he's also kind of tired. They didn't know about the complex musing he would let linger on his head. The child recalled all the time he had spent working, struggling ever since he joined this office. Starting from contracts that some would consider nothing more than errands, to slowly building up his reputation. The anxiety of missing the contract's deadline, all the time his life was at risk due to the underestimating of the enemy's numeric advantages. After all their toil, the office finally seized a remarkable opportunity like a contract from Aircorp. A wing. People were finally starting to recognize them. He was rather proud to be a member of one such office. But... On the other hand, worrisome thoughts plagued the child. How does he handle a boss like that, who's always end up drunk? Is she going to be okay? Well, of course, she's no slot when it comes to fighting and has no trouble picking up work for the office. But could this boss really take on a job of such gravity when he himself wasn't entirely sure about his own capabilities? Hmm. Some fresh air will do me good. The child looked away from work for a moment, but got up and opened the windows. <sighs> he hoped that the pitter patter of the rain would wash away the heavy doubts cast upon his heart. But there was something ominous about this contract that rubbed him the wrong way. A foreboding feeling about a terrible incident happening on a terrible train. Oh, if only he knew. If only he knew. New. Poor Rain. Poor Mika. Where's Mika? I would have loved to see the Mika account for that. Oh, but alas, but alas. That actually takes quite a lot of time. Rudy on. I still need to do yours. Come on. Be a bit shorter. You're just a priest. You got this, right? You got this. I'm gonna miss the dumpling and eating part. But she does look kind of cool. She does look kind of cool. I give her that. <laughs> and I guess she is kind of eating. I mean, she's still eating. A food for thought. This book got a real nice title. Don't it? Think about it. And be it for your heart. That's better be one honey meal, don't you think? That is what they say here, anyways. So that is why you are... Having a whole meal in the library? <laughs> yes, of course. Yep. <laughs> Wait, no, come on. You gotta be exact in your wordings. Or suffer confusion and, and misunderstanding. I mean, look at that girl. She's already gazing over. <laughs> I'm having a snack, just so you know. Right. Look, this is a library. This is where you find various foods for thoughts, right? So in other words, this place is full of food. Which is to say that this place is, in an essence, pretty much just one huge diner, right? In conclusion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a little snack in here. Just that you know it. Yeah, okay, I think we, we can end the interview right here. Unlike your food for thought, this interview is severally lacking in substance. I let the Madam Library know that I had a rather fruitful interview with you about the DCA Association and its vast mega diner with dishes from all over the city. How's that? Oh, come on. My bad, my bad. I get serious, okay? Just don't tell her any of that, okay? Ugh. Okay, so uh, you wanted to know the essence of the DC Association, right? 
Yes, well, I do know that it's specialized in accumulating knowledge. But I do want to know what this association means to you, Miss Rodion. Hmm, what this association means to me? This place is like home. I'm sure you already know that the DC Association picks up and raises kids without parents or guardians, right? I'm aware, yes. To the public, your association is known as the Association of Charity. Well, that is how I ended up here. Boy, that really was a long time ago. Before that, I had lived off dirty stained bread from the street, slept under sheets made of clothes, dripped off the back of my dead friend's body. Yeah, I guess I had times like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, too dark for you? <laughs> well, anyways, they picked me up and gave me a proper life. It's kinda annoying though, as a member of the association, I gotta study so dang hard in order to give the knowledge to others, I guess. Well, you've made it to Sector 4, and that means you've been working hard, right? I doubt all you've been doing here was feed yourself with stuff for the guts, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I studied that hard. I must be a natural genius. <laughs> she is still full of herself. And that's the best part about her. <laughs> I gotta say though, studying isn't completely joyless. <sighs> because the more I know, the stronger I get. Ah, I heard of that. Your strength is proportionally to the amount of knowledge that you have amassed. <laughs> the undying truth of this universe itself has my back. Of course, I'd have no trouble beating the crap out of those knuckleheads. Some bird brain idiots underestimated the DC fixes, you know? When they heard us coming, they think they are able to fight some nerds. So they look down on the association. Doesn't that get irritating? Not at all. Actually, it's spicing things up. Every time they dare look down upon us, my stallers glows with power and my fist smites their ruin upon their curb sites. They are just perfect opportunities to show how wide the gap of knowledge is between us and those ignoramuses guys who don't know the true power of the DC Association. Don't you think? True? They don't know about anything. They aren't even prepared to handle the power of DC. They just think, just because they read a bunch of books, that they might be weak. But that's not the case. That's just not the case at all. Okay. I think with that, all of them are up to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've watched this, i watched that, the picture has changed. I don't think the picture got changed for them and there wasn't any conversation for them either. Wait, I can up tier them? Oh! I thought that would be story related. But I guess after the second dungeon it's no longer for free. Now I have to do it myself. That is good to know, but we are getting the their passives now, the support passive and all that. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Now let me see the time really quickly because it actually took a lot. I still have a little bit of time. We did in fact unlock a new thing around here, the mirror dungeon, and I think Luxivation got an upgrade as well, but it's just an extra fight, right? That looks interesting. So that is XP, that is the light bulb thing, doomsday calendar. Okay, so I can fight abnormalities, daily bonus, three times, nine hours left. Can I just fight against the... 
difficulty level 10, uh, 20, I mean. It costs two modules. What about the mirror dungeon? Mirror dungeon. You can choose mirror dungeon from the list to enter. Only one expedition can be carried out at a time. If you want to enter a different mirror dungeon where the expedition is in progress, you need to clear out or forfeit the ongoing expedition first. Each mirror dungeon, excluding the mirror dungeon in the beginning, has two different modes, normal and hard. Weekly bonus. Every week you have you are given three weekly bonuses, legible that grant you an additional reward from mirror dungeons. Okay, that's the same thing that we saw with the Fred thing. Unlock requirement. Each mirror dungeon has requirements. You need to meet to, to unlock the stuff. Ego Gifts Compendium. You can check the list of Ego Gifts that appear in the mirror dungeon. The one you haven't obtained yet in the mirror dungeon. Uh, at the big screen will be marked as with no data. Okay, so I can check the egos that I can get. What the hell? Starting Ego Gifts. When you enter a mirror dungeon, you're offered a random selection of Ego Gifts to help the exploration. Choose one to take in with you. Today's expression, homeworld, Hellfly Dreams. Okay, I'm gonna read that once that happens. You will select a team of sinners to enter the mirror dungeon with. Each mirror dungeon has its own size limit for the starting team. Okay, you can view the egos. By using the present, you can load up identities, ego set up to previous use for the mirror dungeon. Okay. Cost. You can view the cost in the possession here. Cost is used when purchasing ego gifts from the shop or when acquiring new identities or egos to have on your team. What? Identities, egos to have on your team, shop. Da, da, da. In all difficulties, you are now not given any starting coins. But initial team setup doesn't require any cost. On hard difficulties, you are given a set amount of cost to build your initial team. Uh huh. Selecting identities. Select identities for the Sinner's Mirror Dungeon. All identities are set at the level appropriated for the dungeon. So if I'm under level, they're going to level me up. Choose Ego to use for the uh, selected Sinner, of course, of course. Enter the dungeon. Have to confirm it. Exploring the dungeon, layers of parameters are randomly generated each time you enter. Proceed by moving one of the adjusted spaces in the sector and deal with the encounters and events waiting for you. So that's pretty much like the dungeon. Ego Gifts. As you explore the dungeon, you may acquire Ego Gifts. These items offer powerful effects that last until the end of exploration. Effective attacks. Below the combat encounters the knots in mirror dungeon. Types and affinities afflict effects against the enemies will be shown so that I know which type of weakness I need. Sinner's HP. The HP is Sinner and lost life of your sinners will carry over between encounters. Like usual. Rest stop. In mirror dungeon there are rest stops where you may heal your up for free or spend coins to gain an identity or ego to deploy to the team. Do I have to select only one of them? Okay. Product catalog. At the shop you can purchase ego gifts, heal allies, recruit identities, ego power-ups, selected allies use the cost you earn from combat encounters. What? Exploration reward, mirror dungeon reward. After claiming an expedition, you have spent a Kathia model to claim rewards. If you use the weekly bonus eligible account, you can earn larger amount of battle pass XP and some lunacy. The amount of reward depends on the numbers of knots cleared. So I want to do a lot of stuff. Aha! Uh -huh. Hard difficulty reward. Once the hard difficulty of the mirror dungeon is unlocked, the hard difficulty's reward count will be displayed above. On hard difficulty, you can earn more battle pass XP. You can also claim the reward three times per week. The hard difficulty reward bonus and the weekly bonus apply is independently. You can maximize the reward by applying the weekly bonus to the hard difficulty's reward. So I can use this for hard mode as well, if I can handle hard mode. Starter buff. Uh, mirror of Mirrors of the Mirror Dungeon. 
after it has started, buff can also activate. Okay. That's a lot of things, though. <laughs> starter buff effects. Starter buff can be activated using Starlight, providing various effects to aid the Mirror Dungeon Expedition. Starlight can be earned by playing Mirror Dungeon, reaching further floors rewards more. Starter buffs apply to both the Northern and Hard difficulty, but it does not affect other Mirror Dungeons. You cannot use the Starlight from a Mirror Dungeon to activate star buffs in other Mirror Dungeons. So, the more I do a mirror dungeon, I can make it easier for myself. So if I do a lot of normal runs, I can help me in the hard runs. Right? Right. Okay. I can only do normal. Mirror of the beginning. Mirror of mirrors is later. After clearing 454. Okay. Yeah, mirror of mirror normal mode. Ah, uh, you know what? That actually took a lot. Oh my god. Where can I see this? Can you say that would be hidden? Didn't they say that would be? I'm not gonna question that. Okay, so I'm. I know for a fact that I don't really have that much time left. I would say we're just going to give uh, probably this one a try. I don't think abnormality fights are going to take that long. It is going to give us some of those light bulbs. So that's going to be fun. Open Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Daily change, okay. Useful type purple, great. Rodeo was gonna have some fun with this. And I guess we're just going to give it a, a chance, I guess. I mean, the cost isn't really so bad. I have like 300. I can attempt a couple of times and craft some more throughout the weeks, right? <laughs> oh man. Okay. So, is this pretty much the same as before? It seems like he's waiting for us. Bleed, bleed. Okay, we need some defense. Just to make sure who's who's currently targeting him. I think I wanted her to take care of it. Yes. And then we have a, a mix of the other targets as well. Okay, that's gonna be fine. That is certainly going to be fine. They should all be able to win the classes without any issues. It's gonna be fine. I think I should have redirected that one back to my Zeng, but as you can see, our Honglu doesn't have any issues handling those guys. Which means I can go for. Is that. Is that their incision? No, that is Grind the Mola. 30. Freaking 30. And this one has to be redirected back to him, please. Favorite, favorite, and everyone else gets free hits. Oh my god, are you serious? He sang! You were supposed to win there! <laughs> Was that a level 3 skill for him? I didn't even notice that actually. Should have paid more attention, huh? <laughs> Okay, that guy's defeated. Still not moving. I might want to save that for the next turn because it's, it's really strong. 26. You can build some Trevor, that's gonna be fine. And he's going to die before we even have a chance to use all of this stuff. Yeah, there's no way. We saw that. Everybody looks upset. Okay. Getting ready for an attack. I need to make sure to kill at least one of them. So that we can sacrifice them. And I guess we can at least redirect one of the moves. Yeah, we can at least redirect one of the moves. And inflict some trap at least. So that's gonna be fine. What was that just now? Did we already trigger a couple of those passives? Support things? I think we did. Oh no! No! Rodion! No! <laughs> we 
were supposed to kill that guy. We were supposed to kill him. If he doesn't die, we have to sacrifice our guys again. And that would be terrible. That would actually be terrible. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, oh, shoot. There are many ways to calm one down, but this abnormality seems like uh, the gift likes to like gifts the most. A fresh patch of blood might be able to appease it. <sighs> Fine. I'm gonna give you the guy. Can I give the guy? Oh, he won't lust. You have lust? Of course not. Well, this is a guarantee. There's no way she can fail. Fine. Fine. We get her blood. Hope you like it. Satiated abnormality calm down for a moment. 20 HP. At the very least it got weaker, so that's gonna be helpful. Still! Hate it that I lost so much stuff. I probably hit this guy. We still need to redirect at least a couple of hits, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, good hit. Let's see if we can at least destroy the arm. That's what's certainly going to be helpful for us. At least that way we don't have to worry about that many attacks at once. Two, three, four. Perfect. Almost staggered. Are you able to finish him off? Love to see if you can just finish him off in one go. It would be very great. Perfect job on that part. Ouch! That was a lot of bleeds. Gonna get the stick on the right arm. That's good. Okay. So he lost the attack buff. Or the attack debuff. But it's fine because I got both arms staggered. The word hurts, I would say. And you could certainly beat that guy. Yeah. I don't think it, Do we really need to destroy the all of them? I mean, as long as we keep them under control, he's not going to enter the next phase when he's literally burning, right? If he's burning, he's going to get stronger, and the puppets are also going to get stronger by launch. So if he carefully... Ah, never mind. Never mind. He, he always gets stronger. Or rather, rather angrier? Let's block against that. Go for the water attack. I can ignore his attacks. And try to avoid as much burn as possible. Okay. Come on. Ah, The one coin that actually mattered. Oh well, it's still, it is still able to do a lot of damage, right? Yeah, kind of. 30 points is still a lot! Okay. Okay, I was about to say, you're not gonna lose against that one guy, right? Ooh. Ooh, he's saying, no! No, you're <laughs> getting staggered! <laughs> you're actually getting staggered! And that guy is about to burn. Okay, I think I already killed a couple of them, so that's good. And I do need more of the light blue colors. It's gonna be fine. Okay, one. Stay safe. Okay, that broke through. Another one has been defeated. Is it enough to finish him off? Yes, good. On. Ah, he survived by one point. It's fine. It is certainly fine. At the very least, we got a lot of tremor, right? At the very least, we had that. To weaken the flame, you will need cool water. Since we aren't carrying any buckets of water, we should offer up someone to cool instead. There you go, clay doll. We gave a living clay doll as tribute. The flame shrunk to a flicker. And he lost 100 health. Great. And of course, Doomday Calendar expired as well. Even better. No. 
he is currently defending and not going for that strong move, which is very good. That's exactly what I wanted to see. And that is actually going to lower his attack. That might become handy, I'm not entirely sure yet. It's certainly going to do more than sinking, right? At least I hope. She even got the, the hits as well, which means it's going to do even more damage. Okay. No, oh, never mind. I guess it has resistance towards it. Still, at the very least, we have Rapture. And he was kind of guarding. Takedown has been applied. Come on. That guy is dead. Perfect. Trevor has busted. And he's still guarding. He is actually still guarding. Well. I guess it's time to go for the strong moves now. Daring decision, of course, of course. In order to boost up even further, we're going to go for the, the, the what's it called? Wooden dogs as well. Right, sure, why not? A lot of tremor, perfect. Let's apply some singing as well, because why not? There we go. Still guarding, I see. I'm gonna give you some rupture and sinking and Ah, daring decision. We all love daring decision, right? <laughs> okay, victory! That is going to give me an uh, extra reward because it's the first clear. And we're going to get a threat. Figgy, right? Yes. Only four of them though. Only four, but still, I take it. I take it. And I don't even get a clear check or something. Huh. Is that a daily bonus? Do I need to use... Do I need to do that three times? I guess I do. Just, uh, just a double check. That's a weekly bonus. Okay. And I have nine hours left to do this. It has always cost two modules. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make a cut right here. In the next part, I'm probably going to give Miro Dungeon a chance. Just in order to see what's going on over here. Not entirely sure when the weekly bonus is going to be resetted, but I'm pretty sure they're going to say that at a later point. Having to refight this fight a couple of times is going to take a while. Not even sure if it's going to be that much worth it to, to use two modules each time, seeing how we literally only get like four threats out of that. But still. And nevertheless, I'm gonna worry about that later. Anyways, I hope you guys had fun in today's part, and see you in the next one, where we're going to have some fun with the mirror dungeon, probably. And depending how long that goes, we might even start the next chapter. Anyways, until then, bye bye!